Guys will not be acting or talking or using the slangs of the world. Men will. Women will be acting according to the lust of the world, the ways of the world. We'll dress different. We'll talk different. We'll look different. We'll relate different. We'll walk different. When the Holy Ghost is really in us, you see, there'll be a difference. Not only in church, but at home, on the job, in the community. There'll be the Holy Ghost living the life of Jesus through us. A self-sacrificial life, a holy life, an innocent life, a pure life, a godless life, a life of true holiness. Not also. We can't have our understanding dark. We have to throw out all the things that would darken our understanding or deep thought of Jesus Christ and how he requires us to live. Let us see in verse 17 as well. Verse 18, I'm sorry. It says, alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Alienated means being a non-participant in the life of God. And the word ignorance there means a choice to ignore knowledge. The Lord says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. And then he goes on to say, because you rejected knowledge, not having knowledge is a choice. If I don't know how to get down the street, it's because I'm choosing not to know. Now it's the veil, I'm choosing to focus on something else. Number two, let's look at verse 20 as we pick up speed and bring it to a close. What's the second step of true holiness? We looked at false holiness, which is just professing faith in Christ, but not obeying him. But what is true holiness? The second step, verse 20 says, but ye have not so learned Christ. Second step is learn Christ. Spend your time in the Bible. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God. The word approved in the Greek means accepted. See, most of the church is considered study an option. Well, I study when there's not a good TV program. I study when my boys are around to talk about the game. I study when my girlfriends are around so we can talk about things. I study when my spouse is not there. I study when I have nothing better to do. You study, you're going to hell. If you don't study, you don't know God. If you don't know God, you'll not be with God for eternity. situations and you're heeding him and you're following his direction straight to hell. It's one or the other. Enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the way in God's the road which leads to destruction and many there be that go in their end. But straight is the way narrow is the road which leads to life and few, few that word the good means a puny number. Noah, Jesus says in Matthew 24 verse 7 in the days of Noah there were eight souls saved and Christ says as it was the day of Noah so shall it be the coming of the Son of Man he's coming back it's going to be a small number that will make it in be part of that number now it might be too late tomorrow a small number a small number if you're not studying the word you are studying the world and the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 3 and 4 Satan is the God of this world who's blinded the hearts of those that believe not that the light of the glorious gospel should shine into them and they should be saved. Believe not in the Greek doesn't mean they don't profess that Jesus is Lord. It means they disobey. 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 Is there disobedience in your life anywhere? If there is, Christ will have to judge it and it'll have to discard it because it's worthless to him. He'll have to punish it with fire. 
Remember, we have to be up under Jesus. That the umbrella of his blood will cover. If he's on the highway of holiness and you're on the highway of sin, false holiness, you're not covered. You're not covered. Lord of Jesus, he says in Matthew 11, verse 28 and 30, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Christ commands us to come and learn of him, not of the educational system, not of the news, not of what's going on in Hollywood, not even what's going on in the church. Come and learn of him, not what the, the parents are saying, not what your relatives are saying. Five. says, have you loved your first love? In that case, he says, be zealous and repent for leaving prayer for the cell phone, for leaving the word for the TV. Repent for filling your time with friends instead of the Heavenly Father. Repent. Time is short. There's no TV in heaven. There's no radio in heaven. No BET in heaven. No nightly news in heaven. Get rid of it now. Or you'll go to hell with it later. True holiness. You see, if we really love Jesus, we won't want anything that Jesus is not in. Oh, that's a good word there. That's a good word there. See, I love my wife. So I don't love it. I love women in terms of as a brother in Christ. I'm not interested in it. I'm interested in my wife. The only woman I'll have any relationship with is my wife. Uh, her. Well, you love Jesus, you want to relate to Jesus. Anything that's not Jesus, you won't relate to. Any woman that's not my wife, I won't relate to. It's a simple matter of love. If you love him, you won't relate to that which is against him. That which caused him to die on the cross and suffer for your sins. You won't put him to death anymore. No matter what the thing looks like or smells like or talks like or no matter what success it can seem to give you, you'll hate what's not him. The Bible says in Psalm 97 verse 10, you love the Lord, hate evil. Amos 5 for teaches, love the good and hate the evil. We need to hate sin, hate the world, hate the flesh, hate self, and love Jesus Christ. True holiness is loving Jesus more than life. Paul says in Philippians 1 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42, Jesus came to a city. And a certain woman received him into her house. And she had her woman's name was Martha. And she had a sister called Mary. And Mary sat at his feet and heard his word. But Martha was covered about much serving. She was serving in the church. She was serving in the job. She was serving with her friends and her family. And she said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me alone to serve? Peter, therefore, she helped. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary has told that good part, which will not be taken away from her. What did she do? She sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. She, they, she heard his word. Are you doing what Martha did or what Mary did? Are you serving the flesh like Martha or being still and knowing he's God like Mary? Those when he says, be still, and then you know that he's God. Not be occupied with many activities. Not have your hand in 50 different baskets. Not try to be the big CEO of the next century. Not try to be the next Bill Gates. Not try to be the next Obama. Not try to be over there and helping the family and helping the relatives and helping the neighbors and do it or trying to heap up for yourself. He doesn't say any of that. It's not all will pass away. The world passed away and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of the Father will abide forever. Church, we have to live by this Bible. He's going to judge us by this Bible. He really is. I don't, believe, I don't think that many people really realize that. I pray even tonight as we're sharing God's word, I pray you aren't focusing on the scriptures that are quoted because that means nothing. 